hilarious to me. We've been to that same restaurant about 10 times. We know how much all the food cost, but we're always shocked when the bill comes. Am, am I the only one? That bill comes and you're looking at, where did all that, <laughs> and the waiter or waitress is just like, Christians. <laughs> Do you know, and this is horrible. Do you know that waiters say Sunday is the lowest tip day of the week? And the highest stress day of the week? I'm not pointing no fingers. <laughs> oh, God, it's good. Lord, you are awesome. I'm hungry. Let's go eat. Come on now. Plan ahead. Eat less. Ouch. Don't get the apple cobbler at the end. But plan ahead. I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to be a generous person because this is how it operates in the kingdom. There was these two women in our church, and they were telling me that they went out, and they were out to eat. And before they went out to eat, they said, okay, we're going to leave a tip that blows our waiter's mind. So you just go ahead and get ready, eat less or whatever. And they planned that, and they put the tip in, and they took a Destiny Harvest card, and they threw it in with the tip. The waiter came and took it, and when they came back, their mind were blown. But they said, you know, I've heard about that church. And I was thinking about coming. Thank you for giving me this card. I'm going to try my best to make it. You do not know by your generosity how you're pointing people to Christ. And this is what happens when God puts us in a situation where we have the opportunity to be generous, where we haven't planned ahead, we have a panic attack. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. I can't. God, but I, oh, oh, oh goodness. Oh, oh. Just save all that. Just plan now. Somebody say amen. amen. Plan now. I'm going to be a generous person. Look at this. In Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 1, it says this. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from God the Lord. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 says this, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his step. This is what I believe that means to us as the church. We plan and prepare for generosity, and then we just wait for God to direct us where to send it. God, I'm going to be a generous person. God, I'm going to live on less than I make so that I can be a blessing to those around me. And all I'm waiting for you to do is point where do you want me? How do you want me to be generous? And I'm telling you, you will find yourself walking at a level of faith and kingdom purpose that you never imagined possible. Somebody say amen. I remember the first time. I uh, gave an extravagant gift, and I'm telling you, I'm not preaching this out of it's a good message. This is literally what God took me through. But I remember I was in my father's church. This was about eight years ago, and the service was coming to an end, and people were giving up and getting up and giving prayer needs. And this one young man around my age, I was 18 at the time, he got up and he said, you know, my car, the engine just blew up and it failed. And uh, if I don't get a car, I'm the only transportation in my house, and we're not going to be able to work. So I need the church to pray that God would prepare another vehicle. Now, I was standing in the back. It was actually in this building. I was standing in the back, and I'm telling you, I was doing exactly what James was doing. I was, was saying, I was standing there just like, man, that's rough. Oh, man, I'm going to pray for you, bro. God, God he's going to be your four wheels. You, 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 Jesus, be a steering wheel in my life. <laughs> I, I was just like, yeah, God, you're going to provide. I was excited for him. And then all of a sudden, God spoke to me, and he said, give him your car. Now, you guys know me. I'm a Christian. I love God. I always do what God tells me to do. So the second he told me to give him my car, my first response was, the devil is a liar. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I said, that's not God. <laughs> That's, that's, I, I'm hearing things. I don't know what the voice of God sounds like. That's just, just, just not God. Here's the thing. I was 18, a month away from going off to college, but I needed to drive back up here every weekend for church. 
Not only that, I was so proud of that car. Now, I'm telling you this. It was the ugliest car I had ever laid eyes on, but it was my car. I worked every summer for that car. I paid for it myself. I crashed it three months after I got it, and I had just gotten it back from the shop. The rust was buffed out of the side. The airbag was stuffed back in the steering wheel. Like, I was ready to rumble. And God says, give it away. And I'm saying, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm sitting there, and God is saying, and you know, this is how I know it was God. First of all this, the devil would not tell me to give my car away. The second thing is this, Stephen would not tell me to give my car away. And I'm saying, you know, this is not God. I'm ignoring it. No, 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 no. And the more I ignored it, the more that sense, that intensity in my heart just said, give him your car. And what I came to, I came to a moment in my life where I was going to say, am I going to trust God? And be the generous person that he's called me to be. Come on, now that's generosity on a level that I can't even fathom. Or am I going to continue to just hold on to things? You know, I could be, you know, this isn't God and all that other kind of stuff. And finally, at the end, I just say, you know what, God? And this is really what it came down to. I said, God, I thought it was losing. Losing my car is not worth hindering my relationship with you. So, God, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Just just to put that on record, I don't like it. But, God, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. And I went up to the guy after church, and I said, hey, I'm going to give you my car. And he looked at me like, what? Thanks, man. I'll borrow your car for you. I said, no, no, no. I'm going to give you my car. We have to plan ahead. I'm going to be a generous person. I'm going to be one that is a blessing unto God. Amen? I'm going to finish that story in a second. But the second thing is this. Write this down. We must cultivate, there's another C, come on now, I'm doing good. Cultivate the right heart. We must cultivate the right heart. Paul told the church of Corinth, he said this, prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity. Another translation says that you can willingly give and not as a grudging obligation. Here's what happens, and and I'll tell you, and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching out of my failures instead of out of my success. When I gave that car away, I was like, God, I'm the man. God, you, I mean, I mean that, that's generosity on a level like you ain't never seen, God. I'm sure, God, you ain't never seen nothing like that. He's standing like, I gave my son food. Be quiet. <laughs> but here's the thing. When we give things away, We focus on what we've given, but God is concerned about the heart that we gave it with. What God is saying is, he says, no, no, I don't want to have to pry it out of your hand. You you ever had a young two-year-old or three-year-old, and they got maybe a nail or a screw or something like that, and you're trying to get it out of their hands, and those little fists are clenched, and you're peeling back each finger. God's like, that's not how I want you to give. You know what I mean? Coworker comes says, man, I'm having a hard time. <clears throat> Pray for you. <laughs> Guy's like, no, give, stop praying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes me think of something. In the book of Joshua, Joshua had a major failure and when they went up to AI. And Joshua fell on his face and started crying out to God. You know what God said? God said, get up off your face, stop praying, and go do what I told you to do. (laughs) Come on now. You know, sometimes, I'll tell you this, sometimes we try to pray our way out of what God already told us to do. We know he's telling us to do it, but maybe if I pray long enough, I can convince him to change his mind. You know, he was mistaken. He didn't understand my situation. (laughs) No, 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 no. God says no. I'm worried about your heart. I want to make sure that you're giving with a generous heart, not just the amount. We're so caught up on the amount. God says it's not about the amount. It's about the heart. There's a story in the Bible where a rich man came to gave his tithe, and he took all this money, and he made this big show. And then a a, a widow came, and she gave what was in our equation a half of a penny. All she had was a half of a penny. And Jesus was watching this with his disciples, and she just dropped it in, and she went off. And Jesus said she gave more than he did. 
He gave millions, she gave half of a penny, but she gave more because her heart was the heart that God is looking for. God's, uh, 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 God is almost like if you're not going to give with the right heart, keep your money. Keep your time, keep your joy, whatever you're giving away, keep it if you're not giving with the right heart. And, and I'll tell you, I, I wish you would hear my heart. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to myself. There's some times where, where I'm just like, man, I got to help them again. They're, oh, man, I can't believe. That's not the heart, come on now, of a giver. That's not the heart of generosity that God is looking for. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2 says this. All a man's ways seem innocent to him. Well, at least I gave. But motives are weighed by the Lord. He says that we're concerned about what we gave, but God is concerned, why did you give? Did you give because I first gave to you? Did you give because your passion is pointed where you're giving? Or did you just give out of obligation? You know, sometimes we give because we're afraid that if we don't give, God will judge us. Or God will rebuke us, or God will move away from us. The Bible says that God doesn't operate in fear. Fear is not of God. We shouldn't give because we're afraid of God's response. We should give because of the passion that we have for God, because of the love that we have for him. And here's why. That word generosity, another word for that is blessing. When he says, he says give with a blessing and not grudgingly. In other words, what God is saying is, if you don't give with the right heart, no matter how much you give, it won't accomplish what it was sent to be give, gave with because it wasn't given with a blessing. It wasn't given with a heart. It was given with, uh, whatever. It's just happy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a couple of things. How can I develop a cheerful heart? How can I be a cheerful giver? And this is important. Write this down. 